everyone, it's Liz, the Frugal Libertarian, and today um, I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a follow-up. Now that enough time has passed between what happened in Manchester and we're getting new information every day about the suspected bomber and the people that have been arrested since that are thought to be connected to it, um, and stories have come out about the victims. I'm sorry, my son is hanging out here and he wants water. I figured it was time, now that we have more information coming out, it was time to finally come out and really talk about what was bothering me so much. In the heat of the moment of watching everything unfold, what was bothering me the most was that I teach students who are really big Ariana Grande fans. And I thought to myself that this could have been them. And that really bothered me. And I think that bothers me on a very um, visceral level because it's, it's these are young girls. That's prime, Ariana Grande's audience is primarily young girls. The whole thing is they're showing more and more of the victims. It, it's pretty awful. It's really, really awful. Um, I read that Ariana Grande is saying that she's going to pay for the funerals for the victims, which I thought was a nice gesture of hers. They also said that she had canceled the rest of her European tour. I do not blame her. Um, it's not even about her own safety. It's the safety of her fans. So, of course, I'm still heartbroken about it. I think what's bothering me more, even than the act itself and the age of some of the victims and the circumstances of what happened, I think what's bothering me more than anything else is that nobody here seems to care. As I've said in other videos, I have a lot of friends who are liberal and none of them are talking about this. None of them are saying a word about what happened. One. One of my liberal friends is. That's it. One. The people who are talking about it are the libertarians. Um, my libertarian friends are talking about it. My conservative friends are talking about it. Liberal friends? No. Just one. Because so few of them are talking, it's driving me literally crazy. I like don't even want to go on Facebook because all I'm going to see are stupid cat videos and, uh, you know, stuff about Trump and Russia. Like they're more concerned about Trump and Russia. They won't even acknowledge what happened to these kids, to these people. And that bothers me. I mean, you look after the Paris attacks, everyone was outraged and rightfully so. After the Orlando attacks, everybody was rightfully upset and talking about it and, and, focusing on it. After the Brussels attack, people were focusing on it. After the um, the Christmas market in Germany, people were talking about it. People were on Facebook changing their profile picture to a German flag or a French flag or whatever else. Now, nothing. The fact that nobody is willing to even talk about it means that they don't want to deal with it. And instead, much like the mainstream media was pushing again as it was going on, as reports were coming in, they just kept pushing Trump and Russia, Trump and Russia. I even went so far in my Facebook account to say like, okay, so um, Russia is worse for you people than ISIS. And what I got back were liberals going, well, yeah, of course it is. Russia hurt our democracy. ISIS isn't that big of a threat. I think part of the problem too with Americans dealing with ISIS attacks is that because the attacks that have been later shown that the person was a Muslim extremist, that they had ties to ISIS, that they, like the Orlando shooter who called up the police department and announced that he did this because of ISIS, he was doing this on behalf of ISIS. Instead of going with that narrative and saying, look, ISIS is actually attacking people here too, they focused on, oh, he had a gun. We need more gun control. We need more gun control. They wouldn't even say that he had made that phone call. Most of the media would not talk about it. They would not talk about his religion. They would not talk about his religion's attitudes towards gay people. They wouldn't talk about any of it because they wanted to push the narrative that this was, oh, this was, our, this was American and, and it, had, it has more to do with gun control. And the same thing with San Bernardino. Pushed the whole gun control thing, ignored the fact that they were extremist Muslims. They don't want to use that narrative because they're afraid of being called Islamophobic. They're afraid of all of that and they're using it to push an agenda that is contrary to the situation. They want more gun control, but gun control isn't going to stop ISIS, you know, and they can't use this bombing to support any of it. 
I'm just, I am so sickened by this. And like I said, I have been one of those people, there's certain times I just start avoiding Facebook entirely because I'm like, I cannot take it anymore. I cannot take the insensitivity. I cannot take the just outward. I mean, I've got people who are sitting there saying, well, Trump colluded with Russia. He peed on that bed. And I'm sitting there like, how do you not know that that's fake? How do you not know that? You, you honestly are saying that? Why? Because BuzzFeed said it? Are you insane? Have you done no research whatsoever? Like, it's that kind of thing. And that's what's going on now. Nobody is even talking about it. Nobody cares that an eight-year-old girl got blown up by a person acting on behalf of ISIS. It doesn't matter if he was born in England or born in Syria or born in Iraq. It does not matter. He did it on behalf of ISIS. Same thing like what's happened here in the U.S. It is fundamentalists who are extreme fundamentalists who are attacking people because they want us to change our life to be fitting with what they want our life to be. And that's why I have a little bit of a hard time. A lot of people are saying, you know, the whole we persevere, we keep going, keep living your life narrative is bad because we need to change things to try to prevent this from happening. And on the one hand, I agree, we do need to change things to prevent it from happening. However, the reason they're doing this is to stop us from our daily lives. It's to stop us from doing what we're doing. It's to stop us from our own choices. It's to stop, you know, it, it, it's to stop a woman who goes in her videos and wears lingerie from performing. You know, it, it's to stop little girls from idealizing a woman that they think is offensive. For me, that's the part where I'm like, no. I'm not going to start wearing even a hajib just because ISIS is threatening me. I am not going to become a Muslim and a fundamentalist Muslim because ISIS and other fundamentalists are threatening me. It's not gonna happen. So to me, on that end, continuing to practice the faith I believe in, continuing to live my life the way I want to live it, you're damn right I'm going to keep doing those things. I'm not going to give in and go, okay, ISIS, stop killing people. I'll do what you want. I'll do what you want. I'm not going to do that. So I, I, that's that's my little bit of, I, I'm torn on it. I'm really torn on it. Um, like I said, I don't want them to win. And that's the hard part. I just wish people cared. Like I said, one. Nobody even said a word. Nobody said, oh my God, I can't believe what's happening in Manchester. This is horrible. Oh my God, I can't believe they killed these people. I can't believe this happened. Nothing. Nothing. If that's, to me, is so... I hate to say unforgivable, but... There you have it. Let me know down in the comments what you think is a good solution for ISIS. I am very torn. I'm not... I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not sure what a good idea is. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you're showing solidarity for the poor families in England who lost loved ones in something that to me is horrific and I, I just wish more people cared about. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.